Welcome, dear friends. Today, our beloved segment, Best Knockouts, is once again set to delight fans of Bread and Spectacle. And today's compilation will satisfy even the most discerning taste. On September 25, 2004, Glenn Johnson, defending the IBF light heavyweight title for the first time, achieved the most significant victory of his professional career by knocking out the legendary Roy Jones. The aggressive style of the Jamaican, continuously pressing his opponent, paid off. After eight rounds, the champion was confidently ahead on all three judges' scorecards. However, Johnson wasn't willing to leave the fate of the fight to the judges. In the ninth round, a precise right hook from Glenn sent Jones into a knockout. Legends circulate about the power of David Tua's left hook. It was this punch that crowned the fearsome Samoan. On November 30, 2002, the stout islander demonstrated that his right punch was also a dangerous boxing weapon. Journeyman Russell Chasteen was knocked out in the second round, succumbing to a perfect blow to the head from the furious Tua man. Tua dispatches Russell Chastain. Lightning strikes in round two, and Tua, Tua improves his. When two Latin American boxers meet in the ring, expect a spectacle. The clash between Colombian Antonio Pitalua and Puerto Rican Jose Reyes on August 14, 2009, was no exception. The Montreal puncher proved more successful that evening. In the sixth round, a powerful right punch from Antonio resulted in a heavy knockout for Reyes. The bout on June 15, 2019, in which the IBF cruiserweight title was contested between former world champion Uniel Dardacos and undefeated prospect Andrew Tabidi ended colorfully. The American boxed with obvious caution, fearing to miss the punch of the Cuban puncher, who immediately took on the role of the hunter in this bout. Tabidi managed this until the 10th round, when Dardacos' counter right struck him into a deep knockout, putting a bold end to the ambitious prospect. <laughs> The KO doctor has struck again. Devastating. And in tears. And through he goes. And he's back in the series. On November 13th, 2021, British boxer Kid Galahad defended his IBF title in the Super Bantamweight against former world champion Kiko Martinez from Spain. The reigning champion was considered the clear favorite and effortlessly dominated the first four rounds. However, in the fifth round, the Spanish veteran once again reminded everyone that a puncher always has a chance, sending his opponent into a heavy knockdown just before the bell. Galahad couldn't recover during the break, and at the beginning of the sixth round, Martinez brutally knocked him out with a perfect right punch. On April 26, 2014, the young Alexander Usyk easily passed the not-so-difficult barrier in the person of journeyman Ben Safoa. In the third round, the Ukrainian southpaw knocked down his opponent and then impressively knocked him out with a powerful straight left. Usyk. 
Safoa. Balans, opuszczone ręce, prowokujące troszeczkę. Z... Brawo, I tak to się skończy. Tak bardzo, bardzo ładnie wyczuł. Włosek bity na całą długo z pełnym skrętem, no to musiał być noko. No to jest to, o czym wspomniałem. Opuszczone nisko ręce i, i prowokowanie. No i sprowokował Uszyka do tego mocnego lewego ciosu, po którym wylądował na deskę. Bardzo wyrównanym, po bardzo wyrównanym boju. Few expected a surprise on February 17, 2007, when the 2000 Olympic champion Audley Harrison crossed gloves with fellow countryman journeyman Michael Sprott in London. The skillful southpaw Audley confidently looked in control at the beginning of the fight and knocked down his opponent in the first round. However, the experienced Sprott had no intention of surrendering to the favorite's mercy. In the third round, during an exchange, Sprott delivered a powerful left cross, sending the giant into a deep knockout. Sven Otki is one of the long-playing and one of the least spectacular champions in history. However, there are always exceptions. On December 1st, 2001, the undefeated German, defending the IBF title in the second middleweight, left the audience in awe. Trailing in points to the mobile Australian Anthony Mundine, Otki, in the 10th round, unleashed a truly puncher's move. The champion's powerful right hook to the temple sent the undefeated native of the green continent into a deep knockout. On September 26, 2009, Thai boxer Ponglasek Wongjong Kam won the championship title in the flyweight division, strongly disappointing Irish fans. Local favorite Bernard Dunn, conducting his first WBA title defense in the super bantamweight division, confidently took the first two rounds, utilizing his size advantage. However, in the third round, to his detriment, he engaged in a brawl with his opponent. Thrice after powerful punches from Ponks a Clack, the Irishman fell to the canvas, and twice he desperately tried to fight back. After the third flight to the canvas, he remained lying on his back. A third time, and that is it. Bernard Dunn has lost his world title. It's a sad moment for the little and kindly man. But the world title is gone, and Former middleweight world champion Kelly Pavlik, due to his aggressive style, simply could not box boringly. Almost every fight with his participation became a celebration for fans. On January 27, 2007, 24-year-old Kelly clashed gloves with the sturdy Mexican Jose Luis Zertucci. The valiant Mexican warrior fought fiercely like a lion, and in the debut of the match, he made the rising American Stars fans truly excited. The spectacular battle ended in the eighth round, when Kelly's powerful combination sent the hitherto undefeated Zertucci into a knockout, even though he had never been down before. Maybe you run into something stupid, Lennox, as you were talking about earlier. And so long as to sleep with a right hand, and Raul Caiz just waves it off. That's the buzz. He buzzes Artucci. Let me try. That was a wicked shot. He was that man sleep. Stand the ground and sleep. No final law. And I guess that's why you don't press the overly press the advantage before it's time. The knockout comes. Well, he definitely had the advantage, and you know, he, I think it's, it's correct that he took his time. Wait for that opening and then take him out. Oh, Set up. 
On December 17, 2016, Hassan Indem Injikam won the interim WBA middleweight title, destroying the previously undefeated Venezuelan Alfonso Blanco in the process. In the first round, the Frenchman viciously knocked out the champion with a powerful right to the temple. It was not a sight for the faint-hearted. On March 28, 1981, the legendary Michael Spinks, then still carving his path to championship heights, made a bold statement by stopping former world champion Marvin Johnson in the fourth round. Michael's sharp left uppercut gracefully put the seasoned opponent on the canvas, depriving him of even the slightest chance of continuing the fight. On July 12, 1951, the legendary Rocky Marciano achieved an impressive victory over the sturdy Rex Lane. A powerful right-hand strike from the Italian-American sent Lane into a heavy knockout. The match between American Marvin Johnson and Argentine Victor Galindez on November 30, 1979, in which the Latin American fighter defended the WBA light heavyweight world title, ended beautifully and brutally. Johnson's powerful left punch in the 11th round left no doubts about the winner. On February 25, 1989, the formidable Julian Jackson, defending the WBA title in the first middleweight class, once again confirmed his reputation as a puncher. Brazilian contender Francisco de Jesus bravely endured all the hardships and deprivations until the eighth round. The champion's jab ended the fight, and he added two more inaccurate hits to the falling opponent. A beautiful end to the bout. And De Jesus doesn't know whether it's Rio de Janeiro or Wednesday. That is an amazing knockout. Well, we knew Jackson had... A On November 8, 2014, 42-year-old American Amir Mansour became the author of one of the scariest knockouts of the year. Nigerian boxer Fred Cassie was brutally knocked out in the seventh round by a powerful right punch not for the faint of heart. Now we see a lot of blood coming out of the mouth of Amir Mansour. Yes. Some just spit blood. Um, oh, right, he's down. Oh, he's fight's Mansour over. has knocked him out. A thunderous right by Amir Mansour, and Cassie is out cold. And they need to take a good look at Cassie right now. On November 5th, 2005, the undefeated Jeff Lacey successfully defended the IBF title in the second middleweight against the challenges of veteran Scott Pemberton. Pemberton's size advantage did not prevent the champion from closing the distance and delivering his heavy blows to the target. In the second round, the contender was counted for a knockdown, and seconds before the end of the round, Lacey's powerful 1-2 forced Pemberton to once again collapse onto the canvas hitting his head hard on the ring apron. But the rest of us know he's out of his depth here. Left hook, gets through, right hand, Pemberton down, that's it. Vic Trakulic waves it straight off. It's a second round KO for Jeff Lacey. On October 3rd, 2009, Ukrainian Oleg Yefimovich vividly defended the European title in the super featherweight division destroying the experienced British fighter Isham Pickering in front of Donetsk fans. Oleg controlled the course of the fight from its beginning, already in the second round twice knocking down the opponent on the canvas. 
In the third round, Yefimovic's powerful left hook conclusively ended the uneven championship contest. On June 17, 1995, Big Daddy Riddick Bowe vividly defended his WBO title, avenging his defeat in the amateurs to the Cuban Jorge Luis Gonzalez. The American dominated throughout the match, and in the sixth round, a logical conclusion was reached. Bowe's powerful right blow sent the Cuban boxer into a heavy knockout. It is worth noting that this was Gonzalez's first defeat in professional boxing. On paper, that looks like a big advantage. Ooh, there right it hand. goes. That should do it. That should do it. That's the first time Gonzalez has been down as a pro. And if he gets up from this, he fools me. Now, Mills Lane doesn't bother to complete the count. Canadian David Lemieux was never a top-class boxer. Still, his entertaining boxing style and powerful punch quickly made him a favorite among Canadian fans. On March 11, 2017, the Canadian brawler once again delighted them with an impressive performance. American Curtis Stevens was brutally knocked out by a powerful left hook in the third round. About the terrifying power hidden in Gennady Golovkin's fists, even the laziest boxing fans never spoke. On March 30, 2013, the Kazakh puncher, defending his WBA middleweight title, authored one of the most brutal knockouts of the year. The resilient and unyielding Japanese contender Nobuhiro Ishida managed to last only until the third round in the ring with Golovkin. Gennady's powerful right punch nearly knocked the proud samurai out of the ring. And there was no point in counting. Here's that right hand over the top, wait for it, boom! On, on February 29, 2020, the great Roman Gonzalez vividly captured the WBA title in the super flyweight division from the undefeated Khalid Yafai. The Nicaraguan dominated throughout the match, solidifying his advantage with a knockdown in the eighth round. In the ninth minute, Roman spectacularly knocked out the Briton with a perfectly executed right straight. The signature right hand from Chocolatito. The champ is back. Chocolatito. On November 15th, 2014, Argentine Jorge Sebastian Highland deeply disappointed the Irish fans, securing an unexpected victory over the local favorite and former title contender Matthew Macklin. A powerful right-hand strike from the Latin American in the 10th round marked the end of an exciting showdown. Sebastian Highland, who celebrates, but all the air just got sucked out of this arena, and that was a On January 16th, 2016, the residents of London witnessed the return of their idol David Hay to the boxing ring, after he had not competed since July 2012. The athletic and more massive than usual Londoner did not showcase his former speed and sharpness in this fight. However, even in this version of David, far from his peak condition, could only lose to the Australian journeyman with an impressive record, Mark Damori, in an alternate reality. In the first round, Hayes' powerful right punch shook his opponent, after which the Brit added several more blows. Just by watching how Damori fell heavily to the canvas, it became clear. The banquet would not continue. It's the dynamite puncher such as David Hay. You may as well sign up to face a firing squad at dawn. There's a massive right hand, and Demore's in real trouble. He's down on the canvas. His right arm is pointing straight up. And when they fall like that, they very seldom beat the Cavs. Bob Williams has waved it off, and David Hay has made the briefest of ring returns. A 
first round knockout winner. He's hoisted aloft by his new trainer, Shane McGuigan. And the crowd here in the O2 Arena. On October 26, 1951, the legendary Rocky Marciano crossed gloves with his idol, the greatest Joe Lewis. Aging Lewis lasted for several competitive rounds, after which the initiative passed into the hands of the young opponent. The dramatic climax occurred in the eighth round. Rocky's powerful left hook sent the veteran into a knockdown, and then his furious series knocked down the brown bomber, who collapsed under the ropes into a heavy knockout. After the fight, visiting his fallen idol in the dressing room, Marciano shed tears. Another left crumples Lewis, a blazing right, and Lewis sails through the ropes. Press trying to help Joe back off the ring apron. Referee but only exhibitions after that. As he himself summed up his knockout by Marciano, the reactions were not there. The power of Hasim Rockman's right hand can be attested by the great Lennox Lewis. On June 17, 2004, victim Rob Calloway felt it. In the second round, Hasim delivered a powerful right punch, sending his opponent into a knockout. Calloway with the uppercut. Gutty performance by Calloway, Larry. He's really hurt. Pounding right hand by Rockman, sending Calloway down. Will he get up? He will not. Hasim Rahman, devastating right hand. That is the type of fight they were looking for Rahman tonight. Well, he did what he had to do. He blew his opponent. A great match took place on January 15, 1999, between former contenders for world titles Thomas Tate and Murky Sosa. The fight ended in the 10th round when Tate's right-hand punch sent his opponent into a heavy knockout. He to pound Gorilla there. Oh, there's another knockout. The is stopped in round number 10. The fight against South African Mazonka Fana, whose aspirations the great Marco Antonio Barrera defended the WBC title in the lightweight division, became one of the easiest in the career of the legendary Mexican. The bout took place on April 9, 2005. From the very beginning, Barrera completely seized the initiative, showing the contender who the boss in the ring was and that even relying on a lucky punch was not worth it. In the second round, Marco Antonio's excellent right straight sent the African boxer into a heavy knockout. And, uh, what if so? What you would be well said? Barrera, some of the first round, the first minute, the first second. What a good победу. Оно видно было, оно прочитывалось по его поведению. Down, Ему нужна была эта победа get his, get his именно так. Some, not without reason, consider the great George Foreman the strongest heavyweight puncher in boxing history. On September 25, 1990, at the age of 41, Big George once again confirmed his intimidating reputation. Journeyman Terry Anderson was brutally knocked out with Foreman's precise 1-2 in the first round. Adonis Superman Stevenson was always known for the intimidating power of his punches. On December 19, 2014, during another defense of the WBC light heavyweight title, the Canadian Haitian once again pleased his fans. The champion dominated throughout the fight against Russian Dmitry Savotsky, who was knocked down for the first time in the second round. And in the fifth round, it was all over for the contender. Stevenson knocked him down three times. The final fall of the Russian, after a devastating left, put an end to the uneven match. 
Just by the way he fell, it was clear that the referee's count was unnecessary. Matches involving David Lemieux never left spectators indifferent. On October 29, 2010, the future world champion pleased Canadian fans with another bright performance. Hector Camacho Jr., the son of the great champion from Puerto Rico, was considered a good test for the prospect from Montreal. Lemieux thought differently, finishing the fight before the end of the first round, spectacularly knocking out the Puerto Rican with a powerful right punch. Camacho falls back! It's oh, over! It's over! No need to count. Good right? night! No this need kid to has count. just got too much power! Turn, My goodness! Turn out the lights! on Hector Camacho Jr. And ladies wow. and gentlemen, you can f The hopes of fans of the legendary Roy Jones that their idol would have enough to defeat the also quite weathered former world champion Enzo Macaronelli remained just hopes. On December 12, 2015, the tall Welshman sent the American into a knockdown in the fourth round. And a few moments later, a powerful right punch brutally knocked out Jones. The fight on July 2, 2011 ended brutally for the former European champion Terry Dunstan. The former interim world champion Ola Afalabi didn't plan to linger in the ring delivering a perfect right-hand knockout in the first round. His left eye. Oh, what a punch that was. That's a finisher. Great right hand. Terrific right hand. And Terry Dunstan is not going to get up from that one. It's going to be all over in this opening round. And the referee has waved it over. And what a peach of a shot. The defense of the IBF middleweight title by champion Vincent Petway against former world champion Simon Brown ended colorfully. Petway's left hook in the sixth round sent Brown into a heavy knockout. Ahead again, and it's that type of fight. Somebody, oh, Simon gets clipped. Him on the ear, and then it's the left hook. It just starts. To... On February 12, 2011. British boxer Anthony Krola became the author of one of the best knockouts of the year, stylishly finishing off compatriot John Watson in the ninth round. Krola's right punch in the ninth round deprived the opponent of any chances to continue the fight. A knockout artist always has a chance. This obvious truth was once again confirmed on December 14, 2013, by 39-year-old former world title contender Darnell Wilson. Before the fight, his opponent, undefeated puncher David Rodriguez, who had a record against those who barely differed from a boxing bag, loudly declared his intention to end Vladimir Klitschko's reign. Veteran Wilson, who had lost 11 of his last 12 fights, thought a bit differently. In the sixth round, the veteran's explosive left hook sent Rodriguez into a heavy knockout. 36 and 0 in his career. He's all over. This fight's over. Wilson has knocked him out. It's over. 10 seconds left. Darnell Wilson. Wow. And the final round has knocked out Rodriguez with a huge left. And that was what we talked about, Kenny. He's a. On July 29, 1995, the legendary Chris Eubank quickly extinguished the ambitions of little known Spaniard Jose Ignacio Bredo Benny. The fight ended in the first round. First, the renowned Briton sent his opponent to the canvas with a right hand punch. 
And a few moments later, the same right hand punch put an end to the uneven contest. Two shock wins to Steve Collins. Well, the first time he was hit, Baratabuena was down. Remember, he is really a blown up light middleweight fighting a quite heavy hitting super middleweight in Eubank, and he may not get up from that. He's not going to get up, it's over. The referee is not going to even count. He just couldn't take the shots, he doesn't know where he is. And Eubank has won it before you could blink, really. On August 18, 2007, Arthur Abraham once again demonstrated his extraordinary punching abilities, defending his IBF middleweight title against the resilient compatriot Corin Gaver. The incredibly aggressive contender fought fiercely, like an enraged Wolverine, earning applause from fans in the stands. However, from the seventh round, the initiative firmly passed into Abraham's hands, who systematically built up his advantage, shaking his opponent with powerful blows. Even the resilient Gaver could not withstand such a beating. In the 11th round, Abraham's fearsome left hook put an end to the desperate resistance of the Armenian Braveheart. Felix Trinidad is rightfully considered one of the most formidable punchers in boxing history. On April 3, 1998, the idol of Puerto Rican fans once again demonstrated the intimidating power of his fists, defending the IBF junior middleweight title against Congolese boxer Eder Zulu. In the fourth round, Trinidad's signature left hook sent the challenger into a knockout. After such a brutal fiasco, Zulu ended his professional boxing career. Alfredo El Perro Angulo was never considered a top-tier boxer, but the matches of the Mexican slugger, as a rule, were always spectacular. On November 7, 2009, in a fight for the interim WBO title in the first middleweight, the strength of Angulo's punches was fully felt by the undefeated American Harry Joe Yorgi. In the second round, Yorgi had to listen to the referee's unpleasant count for the first time. And in the third round, there was a spectacular finale. A series of powerful punches from the Mexican turned off the lights for poor Yorgi in the most brutal way. From himself. You see there's no quit in him. Now, this is the kind of situation in which a fighter can be badly hurt. His hands are down, he is being hit by solid shots, and he is out cold now after the left and right combination. And a doctor races across the ring, and there is chaos above Harry Joe York. The chance for a knockout always exists. This undeniable truth was once again confirmed on November 24, 1990, by the famous Julian Jackson. In a battle for the vacant WBC middleweight title, the Hawk from the Virgin Islands was clearly losing to the technical Briton Harold Graham. After the third round, the doctor warned the battered Julian that he had one more round. Jackson heeded the doctor's advice, vividly knocking out Graham in the fourth round with a perfect right hook. Oh, no. oh would you believe it? Unbelievable. Would you? But Julian Jackson, what can you say? Here it comes. Graham on the attack. Oh, look! On November 19, 2011, in a bout between former contenders for the heavyweight world title, Michael Grant turned out to be luckier than Francois Botha. The South African boxer looked better throughout the fight, 
leading confidently on all judges' scorecards after 11 rounds. But in the 12th round, the tall American, taking advantage of his opponent's fatigue, landed a precise right-hand punch, sending Botha into a knockout. On November 9, 2012, the promising Gary Russell confidently passed the barrier in the form of tough Roberto Castaneda. The fight was concluded with a hard right punch from the American in the third round. In a clash between two promising American knockout artists, Shannon Briggs and Derek Wilson, held on March 15, 1996, the latter unexpectedly emerged victorious. After Wilson's precise 1-2 in the third round, Briggs tumbled hard onto the canvas. And seeing his condition, the referee waved off the fight. Side and maybe above the right eye. On April 14, 1990, the great Mike McCallum disappointed British fans by stopping the fierce intense match against local favorite Michael Watson in the 11th round. McCallum's prolonged attack, sending Watson into a knockout, marked the end of the fight. My God, this guy was incredibly strong. To beat him, I went through 11 rounds of hell, recalled Mike many years later. And he's just sagging a bit there, isn't he, Jim Watson? Yes, floundering into the ropes. And that was sheer exhaustion as well as those final punches came in. And he's not going to be able to get up from that. It's two minutes and 15 into the round. On July 12th, 1991, the rising star and future legend of world boxing, Lennox Lewis, confidently passed another test in his career. Former world champion Mike Weaver could not compete on equal terms with the young lion. In the sixth round, the British boxer's hard blow to the head sent the 40-year-old ring veteran into a knockout. What the? Пару джебов провел, Weaver, но ему это обошлось в нокаут. Ударом справа. For most boxing fans, the legendary Bernard Hopkins is known as a spoiler capable of drawing up almost any fight. But the earlier version of The Executioner had little in common with his later career. On March 16, 1996, defending his IBF middleweight title, Bernard delivered one of the most impressive performances of his career. In the fourth round, a powerful series from the Executioner sent the previously undefeated Joe Lipsy into a heavy knockout. After such a fiasco, Lipsy retired. That knockout from Hopkins turned out to be too heavy. It's over! Mitch Alpern has stopped this fight! This fight is over, you're right! It was a right uppercut by Bernard Hopkins! And that hurt Joe Lipsy badly! He's talking to Dr. Robert Boy in the ring. He's fully conscious, Dr. Boy. On March 26, 2011, former world title contender and former European champion Albert Sosnowski made another attempt to snatch the title of the strongest boxer in the old world from Alexander Dimitrenko. The competitive bout was slightly in the favor of the Polish boxer, but in the 12th round, Dimitrenko confirmed the saying that in the heavyweight division, the outcome of the fight is often decided by just one punch. The powerful right uppercut from the Ukrainian with a German passport sent the brave Pole into a deep knockout.
Der Kampf ist aus. Patience and hard work will crush everything. This proverb was once again confirmed by the legendary Jersey Joe Walcott on July 18, 1951, during his third bout with the equally legendary Ezard Charles, who held the heavyweight championship belt. For the 37-year-old Jersey Joe, this was already his fifth attempt to capture the championship title. In two of his previous attempts, Charles emerged as the victor, defeating Walcott on points. However, in the seventh round of their decisive match, the indomitable veteran left no chances not only for his opponent but also for the judges, knocking him out with a powerful left hook. With every ounce of remaining energy, Charles attempts to beat the 10 count. And it's all over. That's on April 4, 1990, the formidable Donovan Ruddick once again confirmed his reputation as a fearsome puncher. In the fourth round of the fight with former world champion Michael Dokes, the Canadian rocked his opponent, who only stayed on his feet because of the ropes behind him. Ruddick discharged a furious series of blows to the defenseless opponent, sending him into a deep knockout. Not for the faint-hearted. On September 23, 1952, the legendary Rocky Marciano became the world heavyweight champion, taking this honorary title from no less legendary Jersey Joe Walcott. The champion confidently started the fight, sending Rocky into a knockdown already in the first round, and looking better throughout the match, leveraging the advantage in speed and technique. After 12 rounds, Walcott was confidently winning on points from all three judges. But the relentless pressure from Marciano led to the fact that by the 13th round, the champion simply had no strength left. Rocky's strongest punch in the 13th round sent Walcott to the canvas. And just by watching how the former champion fell, it became clear that the referee's count was unnecessary. Plainly is intent on staying away now if he can. the right hand, walk it. The fight for the vacant WBC cruiserweight title between Britain Tony Bellew and Congolese Alunga Makabu, held on May 29, 2016, turned out to be dramatic. The beginning of the fight was not easy for the Londoner, who experienced a knockdown in the first round. However, in the third round, Tony put a bold exclamation point in the match, harshly knocking out the African boxer with a series of powerful punches. On July 2, 2005, young Samuel Peter easily overcame the challenge posed by American journeyman Taurus Sykes. In the second round, the American found himself on the canvas after a fierce attack by the Nigerian puncher. Attempts to rise only led to the boxer slumping against the ropes. The defense of the IBF Bantamweight title by the legendary Mark Johnson, dated February 22, 1998, ended lightning fast. 
Mark's brutal series of punches sent challenger Arthur Johnson into a heavy knockout already in the first round. On April 19, 2013, Dominican Javier Fortuna made his first defense of the interim WBA title in the super featherweight division. And he did it uniquely fast and brutally. Mexican Miguel Zamudio was destroyed in the first round. First, the champion's powerful left punch sent him into a heavy knockdown. And a few moments later, the same left punch put a fat period in the unequal confrontation. This is a scary knockout for Miguel Zamudio, and that's what happens. You put a fighter at risk when you put him in against a top. Smiling and modest outside the ring, Joe Messi quickly caught the attention of boxing fans with his vibrant style and powerful knockout punch. On September 27, 2003, Little Joe made a serious statement to all top heavyweights. Dangerous puncher Devero Williamson was brutally knocked out by Joe in the first round. That's it. That is it. A one minute and 50 second knockout for Joe Macy. Lightning strikes on boxing after dark in Buffalo. And he Former world title contender Darnell Wilson could never boast of finesse in technique, but he had an excellent punch. On June 29, 2007, the power of the American knockout artist was experienced by his compatriot Emmanuel Nuoto. In the 11th round, Wilson's powerful left hook resolved all questions regarding the winner. The bout between Dillian White and Lucas Brown on March 24, 2018 ended incredibly vividly. The younger and faster Britain dominated throughout the fight, easily avoiding the sluggish punches of the 39-year-old veteran of the ring. The spectacular conclusion came in the sixth round, when White's crowning left hook literally chopped down Brown. There again, another glob of Vaseline flies through the air. Brown is down and out after a left hook. Finally, White goes to a neutral corner, and the referee stops the fight. Medical staff rushing into the ring. White did tonight. The question is, did he beat a fighter or... The bout between Colombian Prudencio Cardona and Mexican Antonio Avalar held on March 20th, 1982, ended incredibly beautifully and brutally. In the first round, a series of punches from the Colombian boxer sent the former WBC lightest weight champion into a silent knockout. On March 31, 1990, the young Terry Norris won the WBC world title in the first middleweight class, taking it from the dangerous Ugandan puncher John Mugabe. In the first round, the contender knocked Mugabe onto the canvas, and shortly after the resumption of the fight, he spectacularly knocked him out with a right hook. On October 31, 2015, the promising Ukrainian Yevgeny Kitrov easily dealt with American Josh Luteran. In the second round, Kitrov's right punch put a bold end to the bout. On April 9, 2010, 
Audley Harrison spectacularly avenged himself in a bout against Michael Sprott. Sprott appeared to have the upper hand throughout the fight, but in the 12th round, Harrison seized the opportunity with a perfect left hook, knocking out his opponent decisively. On November 3rd, 2012, Sinsuke Yamanaka successfully defended his WBC Bantamweight title, leaving former Mexican world champion Thomas Rojas out of contention. The Japanese boxer controlled the course of the match from the very beginning. And in the seventh round, Yamanaka's explosive combination ended the confrontation decisively. On December 3, 2016, Namibian Southpaw Julius Ndongo strongly upset Russian fans, taking the IBF title in the first super lightweight from the undefeated Edward Trojanovsky, who was considered the clear favorite of the fight. There was no real fight. Already in the 40th second of the confrontation, Julius's perfect left straight sent the Russian into a heavy knockout. Give me a stool. Give me a stool. Ah! On October 17, 2015, Cuban Southpaw Luis Ortiz easily defeated Argentine puncher Matias Ariel Vedondo. In the second round, Vedondo went down. And in the third round, Ortiz's precise 1-2 put an impressive end to the unequal contest. On March 27, 2010, Former contender Chris Henry scored perhaps the most important victory in his career, brutally destroying former world champion Hugo Garay, who was considered the favorite in their matchup. The guys started fighting energetically, not wanting to postpone the action. In the first round, the American's right hook knocked out Garay decisively, marking his first career early defeat. Slide off to the right. See that right yeah. hand, sneaky right hand in there. He gets up over, and then he pushes him down. I don't think he's going to score that as a knockdown. Or is he? Yeah, he must have hit him with some shot. He's not getting up. The fight's That's all it. it's over. over. The the championship reign of the legendary Dick Tiger, who defended the title of the absolute world champion in the light heavyweight division on May 24, 1968, against the equally legendary Bob Foster, ended brutally. The fight concluded in the fourth round when Foster sent the champion into a knockout with a powerful left hook. On July 18, 1987, the great Mike McCallum brightly defended his WBA title in the first middleweight against the claims of former world champion Donald Curry. The match was by no means easy for the champion. And after four rounds, Curry confidently led on the scorecards of all three judges. The magnificent left hook from Mike settled all doubts about the winner in the fifth round. Here comes the knockout punch right there. You saw a little bob and weave defensively from McCallum. And then as Curry pulled back, dropped his hands, McCallum never had his eye off the target, Gil. Superior left hook right on the chin, and Curry went down like a tree. Tim Curry made one of the basic errors in boxing that you teach beginners not to make. The incredibly dramatic battle between the undefeated Kennedy McKinney and Welcome Nasida on December 2, 1992 stands out. The African boxer, defending the IBF title in the second super bantamweight class, seemed somewhat preferable throughout the fight and was leading on points according to all three judges after 10 rounds. 
Nasida's advantage solidified in the 11th round when he managed to knock the American down. However, in an unexpected turn, McKinney took advantage as Nasida neglected his own defense while cornering the opponent. McKinney seized the opportunity and delivered a perfect right hook, literally knocking out the South African. In March 2017, when the legendary Nicaraguan Roman Gonzalez sensationally lost his WBC title in the lightest weight class, falling to Srisikis or Rungvisai by majority decision, many hastily dismissed it as just a bad day for the champion. On September 9th, 2017, a rematch took place, which truly set everything in its place. In the fourth round, the Thai boxer sent Gonzalez into a heavy knockdown. And after the resumption of the fight, he delivered a heavy knockout with a perfect right punch. He's down, and surely out this time. It's all over. It's a huge win for Srikasen Sorangvisai, who destroys Roman Gonzalez. And he does it again. The southpaw from Thailand. When two Latin American boxers meet in the ring, expect a spectacle. The clash between Colombian Antonio Pitalua and Puerto Rican Jose Reyes on August 14, 2009 was no exception. The Montreal puncher proved more successful that evening. In the sixth round, a powerful right punch from Antonio resulted in a heavy knockout for Reyes. On September 28, 2007, Daniel De Leon faced off against Colombian Ronaldo Lopez. From the very beginning of the fight, De Leon established his dominance. And in the fifth round, Daniel's perfect straight left put an end to the unequal contest. A Reinaldo López, esa no es, todavía va a venir una más. La más. On March 31st, 1980, Mike Weaver became the author of a small sensation by knocking out the undefeated favorite John Tate and claiming his championship belt in the WBA heavyweight division. The fight wasn't going well for Mike. And after 14 rounds, the reigning champion was clearly leading with a noticeable margin according to all the side judges. However, in the 15th round, summoning his willpower, Weaver managed to make a drastic turnaround in the bout, delivering a stunning left hook that knocked Tate out cold. Julian Jackson is rightfully considered one of the most formidable punchers in boxing history. On July 30th, 1988, defending his WBA title in the first middleweight, he once again confirmed his reputation. In the second round, he sent the contender Buster Drayton into a knockdown. And in the third, he spectacularly knocked him out with a powerful left. What punishment Drayton is taking, Tim. Big round for Jackson here this last 30 seconds particularly. And Drayton is still firing back. Oh, a big he left in. Oh, a tremendous left, left hand. Left hook, Tim. Drayton right dropped like a button. tree. Drayton dropped like a tree. And he is not going to make it up. That's all over. He's trying desperately. Buster Drayton gamely trying to get up with a huge left. 
A small sensation was made by the legendary Puerto Rican Wilfredo Vasquez on April 18, 1996. After 10 rounds, the veteran was trailing behind the WBA champion in the Super Bantamweight class, Eloy Rojas, and his chances of success looked very slim. However, in the 11th round, Vasquez made a drastic turnaround, first sending the Venezuelan into a knockdown and then brutally beating him to a heavy knockout. The timely referee managed to catch Rojas, who had already lost consciousness. After Monty Barrett's unexpected defeat, promising Dominic Gwynn needed to close this setback with a bright and unequivocal victory, and preferably a knockout. For this purpose, the experienced former title contender Phil Jackson, whose best days were long gone, was chosen. The fight, which took place on July 24, 2004, turned out to be surprisingly brief. In the early moments of the first round, Gwynn's combination of a right uppercut and a left hook sent the veteran into a knockout. The bout between Corey Sanders and Nate Tubbs, held on May 21, 1994, ended quite unexpectedly. South African Southpaw Sanders, considered the clear favorite, was knocked down by an impactful right straight from the American in the second round, sending him to the canvas until the referee's count. <laughs> On October 22, 2004, young Daniel Ponce de Leon scored a brilliant victory in a fight with experienced compatriot Emmanuel Lucero. In the third round, the Mexican puncher sent Lucero to the canvas, and shortly after the resumption of the fight, he put an end to the opponent's resistance with a powerful left blow. On August 12, 2023, former two-time world champion and heavyweight Anthony Joshua reminded everyone of the power in his fists. The fight between AJ and Robert Hellenius wasn't a showcase of excitement, but its conclusion was remarkable. In the seventh round, a powerful right-hand punch from the Londoner brought down the fin as if he were a tree. There was no point in counting. Here comes over the top. Look at the feet. That right hand roll. The meeting dated August 31st, 2013, between Alonga Makambu and Eric Fields ended brightly. The bout turned out to be spectacular, and both guys managed to shake each other with heavy blows in turn. The most successful that evening was the African boxer, brutally knocking out the American in the fifth round with a perfect left blow. On March 25, 1989, Michael Nunn made a spectacular statement, 
defending his IBF title in the middleweight against the assaults of the former world champion Sumbu Kalumbai in an incredibly brutal manner. In the first round, the champion harshly knocked down his opponent with a powerful left straight, depriving him of even the slightest chance to continue the fight. Notably, Kalumbai never lost prematurely before or after this fight. On July 19, 2003, the promising Ricardo Rocky Juarez achieved an impressive victory over the sturdy Antonio Diaz. In the final 10th round, Rocky's powerful left punch sent Diaz into a knockout. On June 1, 2002, sturdy American journeyman Maurice Harris became the author of a mini-sensation. In the ninth round of the bout with the undefeated Belarusian Sergei Lyakovich, the American delivered an excellent one-two, sending his opponent to the canvas. White Wolf got up only at the count of ten, and then took a long time to recover in his corner. On September 17, 1999, young Lamont Brewster secured an impressive victory over Quinn Navarre. In the first round, a powerful combination from Relentless sent his opponent into a heavy knockout. The guys is going to learn that there's different ways to make things happen. Good left hand by Brewster, and down goes Navarre. He followed him. Navarre, Navarre went straight back. Brewster. On June 18, 2011, rising star of world boxing Adrian Broner made a serious statement. Securing a spectacular victory over tough middleweight and upset specialist Jason Litzow. Lulling his opponent's vigilance with careful positional fighting, Broner exploded with a powerful series of punches at the end of the first round, ending the match. The referee's fair call coincided with Jason's fall to the canvas. Broner spent a lot of time in Colorado Springs getting ready for the altitude. He says there's been no problem here. Lancing blow, left caught Litzow. Broner misses with some wild shots as he caught Litzow's attention. There's no question he heard him. Mouthpiece is out. Good uppercut. Litzow's down. And it's over in round one. On April 12, 1997, the first match of the trilogy between Israel Vasquez and Oscar Larios took place. In the first round, Larios, after missing Vasquez's attack, found himself on the canvas. The boxer took a vertical position and, true to the Mexican warrior spirit, immediately began to counterattack. It seemed that Oscar seized the initiative. But, on that evening, Lady Luck decided to smile at his compatriot. In the same first round, Israel's furious combination put a brutal end to the fight, sending Larios into a knockout. Instantánea como se acostumbra en el Coliseo Capitalino. Vaya forma de terminar esta pelea. La verdad es que, como lo comentas, Mario, no se espera. When in late 2010, little-known Ukrainian Alexander Cherviak confidently outboxed the more famous compatriot Vitaly Rusely. It was attributed to a bad evening for the favorite, scheduling an immediate rematch. 
on May 28, 2011. In the rematch of the Ukrainian light heavyweight, everything indeed fell into place. Turviuk's wild left swing brutally knocked out Rusli in the first three-minute round. On April 19, 2002, the legendary Thai Pong Saklak Wong Jongkom spectacularly defended his WBC title in the flyweight class against Japanese challenger Daisuke Nato. In the early first round, the champion's powerful left sent the opponent into a heavy knockout. <laughs> On August 18, 2002, the legendary James Tony scored an impressive victory over tough Jason Robinson. To Robinson's credit, he did not look like an easy target, offering a worthy resistance to his formidable opponent. But in the seventh round, James reminded why he was called lights out. Tony's perfect left hook knocked Robinson down, and he spent a long time recovering while sitting on the canvas. The bout that took place on August 16, 1993, between former world champion in the heavyweight division Tony Tubbs and middleweight Jimmy Ellis ended quite sensationally. American knockout artist Ellis, without a significant victory to his name, shocked not only his opponent but also the fans. Ellis's very first attack in the first round, culminating in a precise left hook, knocked out the seasoned Tubbs.